For more than two decades, the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, has been host to one of the world's most prolonged humanitarian crises. During the last 21 years, internal displacement has become tragically routine. When people flee, they have many needs, including from finding housing to accessing basic services and replacing household goods that they have left behind. UNICEF and its partners have developed different context-specific approaches to assist children and families. A primary way that UNICEF has traditionally helped people is by giving them non-food item kits that contain household goods. In 2008, UNICEF started also delivering humanitarian aid in the form of fairs, temporary markets where people could use vouchers to purchase a wider range of non-food items from local suppliers. While these non-food item fairs have been a great success in enabling families to tailor assistance to their own needs, families still have important needs beyond non-food items. To enable even greater flexibility, in 2013, UNICEF DRC piloted unconditional cash transfers. These are also referred to as multi-purpose cash transfers, as their purpose is to meet multiple needs of the households. This was the beginning of the Alternative Responses for Communities in Crisis ARC, programme, funded by the UK Department for International Development. The primary aim of ARC2 was to increase access to basic goods, services and livelihood opportunities for conflict-affected households in order to reduce their vulnerabilities and improve family well-being. ARC2 also included operational research to develop evidence on whether multipurpose cash was a suitable tool for humanitarian assistance in Eastern DRC. Cash transfers are increasingly used globally to meet basic needs. Secretary General Ban Ki moon called for cash based programming to be the preferred and default method of support where markets and operational contexts permit. During 18 months, UNICEF and its partners reached 114,400 people affected by conflict in two provinces of eastern DRC, North Kivu and Oriental Province. Partners chose to provide cash transfers or vouchers depending on the strength of markets in each area. When markets were strong and accessible, people were given cash either directly by the partner NGO or through mobile money and microfinance institutions. In areas where markets could not meet the increased demand from the case transfers, or where moving money would pose a significant logistical or security challenge, paper vouchers or electronic vouchers were used. Almost three quarters of beneficiaries were given cash, while the remaining quarter received vouchers. Families received an average of $120. The precise amount of cash distributed varied according to the prices of goods in the different areas assisted. The priority of ARC2 was to contribute to the evidence base on cash transfers in Congo and globally. The operational research involved quantitative and qualitative approaches, including surveys, focus group discussions and interviews with key informants. The research used a quasi-experimental methodology that enabled UNICEF and its partners to understand the impact of the cash transfers to families. ARC2 beneficiaries were divided into two phases. Phase 2 beneficiaries were used as a proxy control group to measure the impact of cash transfer on Phase 1 beneficiaries. This quasi-experimental methodology allows us to attribute observed differences in indicators to the cash transfer. Beneficiaries spent money on items in line with the programme's objectives, such as clothing and livelihood inputs. Purchasing patterns were very heterogeneous across families and territories, suggesting that cash is a suitable tool to serve the diverse needs of every family, as opposed to packages of in-kind assistance. The cash transfer had significant positive impact on multiple indicators across different sectors, particularly food consumption score, non-food item score and coping strategies index. Thanks to the cash transfer, the beneficiary population increased their productive assets by 25% and more than doubled their savings. The cash transfer enabled more than 16,000 children to access medical care and more than 7,000 to access primary education. ARC2 also tested whether delivering the cash assistance as one large transfer or in three monthly instalments influenced impact. 
The evidence shows almost no difference among the two options in most outcome indicators. Delivering assistance in one instalment is more cost-efficient and qualitative data found most beneficiaries prefer this option. Delivering cash transfers in a single instalment is therefore recommended for future humanitarian, multi-purpose cash transfer programming in Eastern DRC. ARC2 explored whether any differences resulted from registering the wife, the husband or leaving the couple free to choose which member of the family to register for assistance. We found no evidence that programme impacts varied by the gender of the registered beneficiary. The results suggest that letting families decide the recipient of assistance does not change the outcomes and may help reduce household tensions. The research round areas where there is still room for improvement. The targeting process was sometimes poorly understood and there were negative perceptions about the fairness and inclusiveness of the programme. The rigorous research underpinning ARC2 is an important major contribution to the evidence base on cash transfers in Eastern Congo. The ability of UNICEF partners to switch between vouchers and cash in different areas resulted in flexible, appropriate assistance that enabled families to meet diverse needs in tailored ways. As a result, indicators improved on household assets, access to basic services and food consumption. In light of the encouraging ARC2 results, UNICEF scaled up its multi-purpose transfer programme in 2016 to serve more than 38,000 families in three eastern DRC provinces severely affected by conflict and internal displacement.